What's kicking, educational rock stars? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Farah from Farah Henley Education, where I strive to bring you actionable tips, strategies, and simple systems to take back into your classroom to make your teacher life a little easier. Now, if this is your first time joining me here on the channel, welcome. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Click that bell so that you get notified when I go live or upload a new video here on the channel. Um, you are not seeing me, my face, on the screen right now because I am going to be showing you some things using my iPad. Now, I do want to preface this with, even though I'm going to be showing you these things on my iPad, they can be done from a computer um, and projected onto your board if you have a projector or you have some way of uh, screen sharing your device up onto your board um, for the whole class. If you don't, they can also be played on a device that the students that's just on your desk. So um, there's any number of ways that you can use these. The very first classroom management game that I want to share is one that I have actually shared with you guys before. Let me go ahead and open this really quickly because all you really need is a dry erase marker and your dry erase board. Now, if you're still using chalkboards, uh, then chalk, it, it doesn't matter. You could do it like I'm gonna be doing it for my iPad, so you could even make do a makeshift one just by opening a PowerPoint or a Keynote or even a Google Slides and you could draw on it. So I'm gonna be drawing. And that, that classroom management game is something that I use all the time. I've used it uh, in every one of my classrooms and I use it year round. It is a year round game and yes, it is a game and that is the scoreboard. It is my favorite classroom management game ever and uh, it is so simple to use. All you need is, like I said, your dry erase marker and a dry erase board, a piece of paper, a post-it note, that's really all you need because all you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a scoreboard and it's gonna look like this and this is how, um, let me go ahead and grab my pen, this is how simple, you're gonna draw a smiley and you're gonna draw a frowny it is that simple when I say we keep it stinking simple here <laughs> at FHE I mean we keep it stinking simple now obviously the scoreboard you've heard me talk about it before um, it is something that I learned how to use uh, from whole brain teaching when I was a, a, a executive board member and national trainer for whole brain teaching it is very very simple you are going to award points you're going to either uh, you're going to either give frownies or smileys depending on if the students are following directions and those directions could be the five uh, classroom rules that you might learn um, from whole brain teaching or whatever your classroom rules are or classroom expectations are they could be things as simple as raising your hand for permission to speak they could be things as simple as don't turn up side down in your chair anything that you want to give a frowny or a smiley for now here there are some key uh components to this scoreboard that i want to talk about and kind of go into depth with because i see a lot of teachers making mistakes when they're using it number one when we give smileys we can definitely award smileys if i give a point say my students are following directions and they're doing what they need to do um, i can give a, a smiley and we have a simple one second party where the students are going to clap, they're, they're gonna clap their hands one time and they're just gonna say, oh yeah. And it's gonna sound like this, oh yeah. Now, what I often see happening is that teachers are allowing students to have like 15 second parties over these smileys as opposed to a very quick one clap, oh yeah, and we move on. So that's the first key is it's got to be quick and got to be fast. Your classroom management system, you don't want it to be something that just totally interrupts your, the flow of your teaching because you're going to be giving these stu these st students um, or putting points on the scoreboard, whether they're smileys or frownies, you're going to be doing that back and forth very quickly throughout your lesson. The um, next thing that I uh, see student or teachers, or I guess, and I made this mistake in the very beginning as well, but the next mistake I see teachers making is that when they give a frowny, and when we give a frowny, we do what's called a mighty groan. Those shoulders come up to the ears as quickly as possible, and they just go, uh, and it's that quick. It is not drawn out. We don't whine. It's not, oh, man. It is a very quick, uh, and we move on. But what I see teachers doing is they will say things like, oh, man, Scott is not sitting up in his chair. Give me a mighty groan. And they give a frowny with that mighty groan, and the class goes, uh, 
But now they're angry at Scott because Scott's the reason that they got the mighty groan. We never do that. We do not call students out by name when giving a mighty groan. Now that doesn't mean that Scott might not be the problem and my, Scott might not be the reason they're getting a mighty groan. You just didn't call him out by name. So what I like to do is I like to say, man, I've got some friends who are not sitting up straight in their chair, or I've got some friends who are not keeping their feet on the ground, or I've got some friends who are tapping their pencil on their desk, whatever the case may be, and you're going to say, mm, give me a mighty groan, and they're going to say, uh. Now, Scott, if he's the one who's doing it, he knows it was him, and most of the time, nine times out of ten, they're going to stop doing it. And But here's what I like to do. As soon as they stop doing it, I'm going to say, for example, if I know that Scott was the one that was had his feet in his chair or didn't have his feet on the floor or was not sitting up straight in his chair, and I say, man, I've got friends who are not sitting still in their chair, and I give a mighty groan. Well, then I'm going to wait a couple of seconds, and I'm going to say, man, I love how Scott is sitting straight up in his chair, everybody, one second party. And I'm going to give a smiley, and they're going to give a one-second party. Do you see what I did there? I did not call out a student by name when giving a frowny. But when giving a positive point, I did call that student out by name because I want that student to get the recognition for getting, every, getting it right and doing what they have been asked to do. So when we give positive points, we can uh, call out students by name. But when we're given negative points, we never call a student out by name. Now, the second mistake that I see teachers making with the scoreboard is that they let them get too far ahead or too far down. So when you're doing the scoreboard, you'll see right here I've got two smileys to, two, to three frownies. But if I was to give a whole bunch of frownies, what happens? The students look at this and they think, man, we are so far down, there's no way we could come back from this. So they get discouraged, they kind of give up, and it's a lot harder to get them more engaged with this game. But if I've got it close, and let's say they're only one point away, or maybe a couple points away from taking over and winning the scoreboard, they're going to be very motivated to um, do what they need to do to get those other smileys. So our rule with the scoreboard is called a plus minus three rule. You never want the difference between frownies and smileys to get more or less or excuse me, more than three. You never want it to get more than three, the difference. So you want to keep it close. Remember that in your head, keep it close. The third mistake is when it comes to rewards. I always underneath my scoreboard write what the reward is, and oftentimes I see teachers starting too big. Oftentimes I see teachers go, oh man, we're going to go for a popcorn party. Now this right here um, is going to apply to all the games I'm going to show you today, okay? If you start the beginning of the year with a popcorn party as their very first reward, you better be ready to take them to Disney World by the end of the year. You need to remember to start small. Those rewards need to be small. Small, small, small. They can get bigger as the year goes on, but don't start the year with the big prize because like I said, you're going to have to take them to Disney World by the end in order to keep them engaged. So start the year small. Start with maybe one minute of talk time because let's face it, our students all want us to be quiet so that they can talk. That is what their ultimate goal is sometimes. They want to talk. They want us to be quiet so they can talk. So start with one minute of talk time, meaning guess what? If you win the scoreboard today or any of these games that I'm going to be showing you today, if you win the scoreboard, you are going to get one minute at the end of the day to talk. Now here's the reality. In the end, you are probably going to have cleanup time at the end of the day and you're probably going to have time when they're packing up and that kind of thing. Use that time that you've already built into your schedule to give them that one minute of talk time. They don't know the difference. They don't know, hey, we were going to get this anyway, so why is it a big deal? Now, as the year progresses, maybe you need to change this to two minutes. Sorry, I meant to erase that. Two minutes of talk time. You can do this with recess, a minute of extra recess, two minutes of extra recess. Maybe they're going to be, um, if you have recess at the end of the day, maybe they're going to be the last 
uh, the last class to be called off the, the playground. I did that one year when I had recess at the end of the day and my students hated to have to line up first. So I would always let them be the last ones. If they won the scoreboard, they got to be the last ones to line up because we were out there with other classes. I've also done it to where if um, we played a morning scoreboard and an afternoon scoreboard, that way the morning scoreboard, because their recess was at lunch, right after lunch. So if their morning scoreboard, if they won it, then they were going to get to go out to the playground ground first before other classes um, and if you're in a um, in a district or in a school where there's a limited number of like balls and jump ropes and things like that my students loved that that year because that meant they got first get dibs at some of the um, the toys and things that were on the playground the other thing you could do is perhaps you have a bucket or a bag of balls and uh, different things that can be taken out to the playground well by allowing your students to uh, win the scoreboard, then they maybe could take those out to the playground um, as well. Maybe that's their reward when they go out to recess. Any number of things can be the reward. Just remember to keep it small. Now you may be saying, well, what about if they lose the scoreboard? Well, obviously their consequence to losing the scoreboard is they don't get the reward. But another one of my favorite things to do with a reward is one or or excuse me, not one or, one more or one less pages of homework. And I'm just going to abbreviate. So one more or one less pages of homework. Now this was something I love to do with my older um, elementary students, or if you're a middle school or high school teacher, this would uh, this one would work as well. But like my fourth and fifth graders, they loved this reward, one more and one less pages of homework because we were required to give homework. And um, so what I would do is if they won the scoreboard, they got one less page of homework. So I would take a page away. If they got, if they had, um, if they lost the scoreboard, they would get one more page of homework. Now, let me tell you, how was I really giving them less or more homework? No, I was not. Because here's the reality. Your students have no idea how much homework they were actually going to get. So let's say that you had planned to give them three pages of homework. Well, if they lose the scoreboard and you're like, man, I was only going to give you two pages, but now you've got three. If you were planning on giving them three, but they won the scoreboard, you're like, man, I was only planning, on, I was planning on giving you four pages of homework, but now you're only going to have three. So I realize that some of you may be saying, oh my gosh, this is so deceptive. This isn't being honest. But the real reality is, is you're playing a game with them. Now, if you choose to actually take away, maybe you have a set set homework that's the same every single day um, and you decide that you want to actually take away a page of homework or actually give more homework then by all means do so but I liked to keep it just to where it was the normal amount but they didn't really know whether or not they were going to have more or less each day so it was simple it was easy they loved it they I never had any complaints and my students loved it so now, if you have any questions about um, the scoreboard, I would love for you to leave them in the comments down below, and uh, I will make sure to come back and answer those. You can also always reach out to support at fairhenley.com if you have any further questions about the scoreboard. But I do want to move on. The scoreboard is by far my favorite classroom management game to play, and it's so simple because it just requires a dry erase marker and your dry erase board and a little bit of imagination. Remember, keep your rewards small, keep the scoreboard close, plus minus three rule, and also make sure that you are not calling students out by name when giving frownies, but definitely call them out by names when giving smileys. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Now for this next one, I'm gonna open um, Google Slides. Now, these next two classroom management games that I'm going to be sharing with you are going to be available to those that are on my VIP teacher email list. So if you are not on that VIP teacher email list, make sure you click the link um, in the description and or go to fairhenley.com and you will be able to right there on the front page, you'll see a link to sign up for the VIP teacher email list. I'm going to be sending out links to these games as well as another um, freebie that is going out to the list from last week. Um, I'm going to be sending those out um, tomorrow in the email. So make sure you're on that list so that you can get these next two games. 
So these next two games, this first one is Classroom Bingo. Now, it is a classic bingo game, and I love to play Classroom Bingo with um, my class, um, especially if maybe I have incorporated it with the scoreboard, where if they win the scoreboard, then hey, then tomorrow we're going to play Classroom Bingo instead of the scoreboard. My students love to do that, so I would even use this classroom management game as a reward for the scoreboard to break it up a little bit and maybe give them a break from the scoreboard. But the way Classroom bingo, bingo works is you are going to decide what is a prize. Now, this particular Classroom Bingo is a space theme. We've got some other themes that are being built that we um, will be putting together soon. But this one, like I said, is going to be free for those that are on that VIP teacher list. Um, again, go to farahenley.com, join that VIP teacher uh, list. And um, so basically, you're going to open this up. It is a Google slide. So you're going to open this up and Google Slides, and you're going to project it either up on your board or you're going to have it just on your computer. I've opened it on my um, iPad. If you have an iPad, you could do that. If you have a, your phone, you could open it on your phone and so forth. Uh, but I love to have it at least um, projected. I love to have it projected for my students because they love to be able to see it and see how close they are. Now, there's different ways that you can do a bingo. Obviously, um, if you've ever played bingo, you know you can do five in a row. Um, the, the middle space is always free. You can also do an, a total blackout. I've done that with my students before where in order to get a bingo, they got to get a blackout. Um, most of the time, that's what we do is a blackout, which means they've got to cover the entire board. Um, sometimes I do it where, um, especially if some some there was one year where I taught in a very, very small school. And so most of the kids were familiar with like bingo and the different types of bingo games because their parents loved their moms and dads loved to go play bingo. And so um, we would do the different things like picture frame or small picture frame or a nine patch or things like that, you know, just because it really depends. And you can still do those as long as, you know, you explain to your students what those are. So any ways that you want to have them make a bingo is totally up to you. But you're going to project this up, and then you are going to decide what their prize is. Again, same rule. Make sure your prize is small. Don't start too big. If you start big, if you give them a popcorn party in September, by May, they better be going to Disney World. Again, start small. The prizes can get bigger as the year goes on. Now, with the classroom bingo, you're going to want to project this, and it's got a spinner, and they're getting to spin to see what they're what they're um, going to be able to cover. So it does leave a little bit of a, a, that um, that randomness to it, and it's not just oh great you did something so now you get to go cover a space. No, it's still very random. So what's going to happen is you've got your classroom rules, your classroom expectations, whatever you call them in your classroom, and as you see. Uh, students do following the rules or as a class if they're doing what they need to be doing um, then you're going to allow them to spin so you ask them to come up and they're going to get to spin now when they spin they are going to tap on um, this click to spin clock click on the spinner now I will tell you this is going to open up a separate window on your browser um, but it is going to be kid friendly so you're not going to have to worry about like you know, crazy ads or anything like that popping up. But when you click on it, so you'll see this, you have to have this in, um, not in present mode. You'll see right up here where it says present. This is in edit mode on Google Slides. Don't put it in to present mode because then you won't be able to move pieces around. But you'll notice when I click on the spinner, I get this box and down here, it's got a, um, a link to the spinner I've already created. So when I tap on that, it is gonna open a new um, space and you'll see that this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, I already had one open over here because I had already been spinning it, but I'll close that one. So this is what it's going to look like, and you're just going to have them tap to spin. It's going to spin. It's going to tell them what they landed on. All right, they got the space. Looks like, oh, they got the astronaut. All right, we have a winner. Now, be very, very careful when you close this. Make sure you close, don't remove, because if you remove, it'll actually take that option off of the spinner, and you don't want to do that. So um, go ahead and hit close, and then you're going, it will leave this window open. So once you have the window open, you don't have to worry about tapping the spinner again. You just move over to that, um, that tab. But go back over to the board, and we need to find this little astronaut. So I'm just going to scroll over. Oh, sorry. I'm going to scroll over and you'll see that the, the little pieces are down here. So I'm going to grab that little astronaut and I'm going to move him onto the board. 
So now I've covered that spot and I have that little astronaut in its place. And you're gonna continue to do this, like I said, until they get a bingo. Um, you can play this all day. You can use it as a mid, uh, mid morning, just extra classroom management. Maybe you wanna do this specifically for cleanup, however you wanna use this. But classroom bingo was another classroom management game that was so engaging for my students. And I love to use this when we had a very specific classroom management issue. For example, when my students were having such a hard time cleaning up after an activity or they were having such a hard time not talking over each other or not talking out of turn. Maybe it wasn't even so much. There was there were plenty of years where I didn't require them to raise their hand for permission to speak, but I did require them to wait till somebody was finished speaking before they started to speak. That way they weren't speaking over each other. Um, so anytime we had a very specific classroom management need, I love to pull out bingo because I would have them work on that specific classroom management um, issue. Maybe it was lining up, whatever the case may be. Um, when we did that, we often played the bingo over the whole week instead of just the day because I was also still playing the scoreboard um, on a daily basis as well. All right, another way you could um, in, in, integrate this is you could play the scoreboard and the reward for um, winning the scoreboard is being able to spin the spinner on the bingo and at that point you can make it a little bit of a bigger prize because it is something that's going to take them a longer time to achieve so that's another way you can use it now if you've used classroom bingo in your classroom be sure and drop me a note down below and let me know if you've used classroom bingo and if you are going to jump over and get on that vip teacher list to grab this uh, freebie out of that email that you're gonna be getting into your inbox tomorrow, then let me know also. Now let's move on to the next classroom management game. It is also a game that many of you are probably familiar with and that is Connect Four. Um, I absolutely love um, Connect Four. Now I didn't show you this on the bingo, but I do wanna show you this really quickly on the Connect Four. In Google Slides, if you come up here and you just add a text box, um, you can come over here and you can draw the text box right here and you can type in the prize. So maybe their prize for Connect Four is going to be, um, I don't know, two minutes extra recess. And that's gonna be their prize for Connect Four. So you can type that into the box and uh, put that up. I apologize, I've got a helicopter going over <laughs> over the top of me. Um, the other thing that you can do with Connect Four it, or with uh, this version is you're going to put them into teams. I like to play Connect Four when maybe I'm going to have table groups. Um, now I only do two different teams because there's there's uh, four colors or excuse me two colors on Connect Four. So if I've got more than one table group then I might uh, combine table groups for teams. But I'll let them come up with a team name. For example maybe this is going to be the Dominators and this one's going to be the um, uh, I don't know what the the T-Rex is there we go the T-Rexes that's what they're gonna be the dominators and the T-Rexes right and so then what they're gonna do is I loved again to incorporate this with the scoreboard so what I would do is I would take this game and I would have it up as well as the scoreboard going on and what I would do is once they got five smileys a group of five smileys Whoever got like that fifth smiley, I would let that someone from that team go up and uh, put something on the Connect Four. But essentially what they're trying to do is they're trying to get four in a row, but they also have to be careful because they want to block their opponent. So essentially what happens is every time you see somebody, somebody's caught following the rules or caught being kind or caught doing any, however you want to make use this, um, they're going to get the opportunity to go up and move a, move a, playing piece onto the board. So for example, let's say somebody from the Dominators, you catch them picking up paper when they weren't asked to, go um, take a turn on the board. Now, they're gonna come up and they're gonna do um, the, maybe they they uh, come up and put it in here in this, spot, in this spot right here. Now remember the rules of Connect Four, they can't just randomly put them on the board because they are actually falling down to the bottom, right? But the whole goal is for them to get four in a row and once they get four in a row, that team has won the game and that team is going to get the prize. Now, this is something I love to do also where I would say that maybe they got um, a minute of extra um, of talk time 
then they would get that minute of talk time and then we would start the game over. So this is one of those games that if it ends quickly, you can always start it over. That's another reason to keep those uh, prizes small. Keep them stinking small so that you're not having to give away Disney World at the end of the year. If you've played Connect Four with your kids, um, be sure and leave that comment down below as well. Um, if you have another game that you love to play with your students, I would love to hear about that as well. Again, don't forget to jump over to farahenley.com and let me show you just really quickly, farahenley.com. Jump over to farahenley.com and uh, you will be able to see right there on the homepage where to sign up, um, right here where it says join the VIP club. Just click on that, you'll sign up for the VIP teacher list and these will come to you in your inbox tomorrow and you will have them to play with your students next week. All right guys, thank you so much for joining me. Now if you're looking for more tips, strategies, and simple systems to take back into your classroom to make your teacher life easier, check out the videos on your screen. Thanks for watching and keep being an educational rock star.